What's up, y'all? So when you, if you're seeing this, it's going to be Thursday the 28th. I promise you I didn't just wear the same thing. Um, I am recording all of these intros uh, for all of these on Wednesday. Uh, that way I don't have to, that way all the videos are just ready to go, ready to drop. Um, this one is going to be focused on um, stopping sort of generational things that have gone on in your family, whether it be abuse, whether it be alcohol, whether it be non-expressiveness, things like that. Um, and, you know, talking about, you know, we have the power to change that. Um, to change the things that have gone on in our family, the negative things that we wish to to not carry over to our kids and to their kids and so on. Um, of course, the link to the full um, full videos will be in my description. Uh, excuse me, not in the description. <laughs> link to the full uh, talk will be in my bio. Um, it's separated into two parts. Uh, so part one and part two, and then there's going to be timestamps as well. Uh, that being said, um, enjoy. The first quote. It ran in my family till it ran into me. What does that mean? Can you so explain that to, to the for group? me, yeah, um, that. that means for me, it would be like stopping generational curses. So or um, barriers and stuff like that. So things that ran in your family that um, were considered normal or were considered regular or were considered. Um, uh, what would I say? What would I give an example of <clears throat> that? My girl, we talked about with your kid. Um, I had a conversation with my girl at the table earlier and she was like, I got some questions for you. And at first I'm like, bro, no, I didn't do anything. Like, why, why am I really about to get in trouble right now? I did nothing. And she was like, nah, it was just these. So. Who that? It's uh, Lisa. She, she, she brought out these questions and I, I really thought I was in trouble for a second. I was like, bro, I was trying to think of, I was like, I can't think of anything I did. Like, why, what, 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 what is about to happen right now? And then she pulled these up. And then she was like, okay, what do you think about these? And I was like, okay. I looked over them. I knew that there was a couple that she wanted yeah. to ask me about. And the, it ran in my family, so it ran into me. We talked about that in a couple of other ones that's on here. But it was kind of similar. Like, if you, that's when we kind of yeah. came down to. I had to think about it for a little bit. But one was probably like. Um, or like, you're initiating change for your family so that it stops there. Like, yeah, maybe if you were in an abusive right? family. There you go, right? right? So it was like, okay, <laughs> my mom was in abusive relationships. I don't know if my grandma and grandfather were, but of course, my mom was in an abusive relationship. And then after that, when we were kids, of course, we were spanked and all kinds of stuff. Whether or not it was abuse or not, who knows? Let's let's not talk about that. <laughs> don't I'm over 18 anybody. now, so anyway, yeah, obviously yeah, I learned my lesson if I'm people. still alive. <laughs> but I'm just saying, so after that, I mean, for me though, I have children, I spanked them, but I don't think I spanked them as my mom spanked me. Like sometimes I would get spanked because my sister did stuff. And, and it was like, you know, so she'll like learn or whatever it is. Well, yeah. but at the same time, sometimes she had a hard day at work and she needed something to take, you know what I mean? Take yeah. out on. And that's where it was. So that was not even, well, yes, the domestic violence part, but at the same time, it was more of being aware of your emotions <clears throat> at the time and not having anger fuel your reactions towards your children to or toward, yes. Mm. So being more aware of your actions, whether it be anger, whether it be whatever. And so that for me, I think is what I stopped, if anything, from my past or my generation was, um, you know, I'm Puerto Rican, so we're very passionate people. We're very expressive people. We're very emotional people, right? Um, so I think for me, I mean, I'm still passionate. I'm still emotional. I'm still all these things, but I'm more aware of it when I'm disciplining my children. I'm more aware of it when I'm talking to my children so that I'm not just talking out of anger or talking out of, um, I think last episode we were talking about being able to, um, like, uh, being able to, uh, acknowledge your kids' successes and not just be hard on them and be like, well, you could have done better. Well, what about this? What about that? Like exactly. But I mean, like, like we were talking about last time, I'm like, I'm not gonna praise them for doing their chores. That's just what they're supposed to do. But at the same time, I mean, like my daughter did my hair, right? She did my braids and I was like, oh, she did a great job. And I was like, it doesn't matter what it looks like. I am not gonna say, oh, well, you could have done this or you could have done that because of, like she did her best. And that's the reality of yeah, it. You know what I mean? Like it looks amazing. Too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so even if it, whatever it is right now, if that's something that she wants to pursue, you giving her that positive reinforcement, you know what? Let me right. try and do this. It's before. like building them up instead of tearing them down because my family was tearing me down. But at the same time, I knew from them, they had a military background. So that's what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to prepare your child for success. You're supposed to prepare your child to succeed in the world of war. 
right? Of battle, of competition, of all this stuff. So you're you're helping them because you're setting them up for the reality of the world because the world's not going to be nice to you. They're, it's just going to crap on you. Mm. That's nice. Those are another thing that we talked about when, when uh, we were talking on the phone and when I brought that quote, it's like, bro, what, what is this? When, um, another thing was like, the whole thing about uh, when we were talking about unexpressive versus expressive house music, like yes. you said that's where that I wrote that quote because you said that you know you didn't have that that type of family and, and because of the way that that you were brought up, you I wanted you to did, change it. You yeah. changed it for your kids. You didn't want to keep the right. cycle going, right? For your kids, yes. you changed it. So that's why know. it ran. It, unexpressive is ran in your family until right. it ran to you. you know because who, who forced me to come out my comfort zone <clears throat> in terms of being expressive? Because who came me, to come out the closet? Who, 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 <laughs> Ooh, ooh, uh, ooh. Basically, got me to be more expressive is what I'm saying. Uh, who, who got me out of my comfort zone? Yes. <laughs> but it was actually my girl because she had a more expressive household. They're more, I love you, more affectionate. And for me, I'm more. It's more through my actions. Like, I'm not gonna go out my way and do this much for a person I don't care about. But at the same time, I gotta find that balance of. Yeah, the actions are nice, but sometimes I just like certain things to be said, certain things to be heard, whether it's an extra I love you or something like that, or, you know, just more hugs or whatever it is, whatever it is, just expressing, just being more expressive overall. And that's something I had to get more comfortable with over time because me being somebody who is just, just keep what I'm going through to myself yeah. and not, you know, not really be outspoken in terms of how I'm feeling, just kind of just going through the motions. So, um, that for me most definitely that was something that really kind of in a way for in a good way forced me to grow forced mm -hmm. me to come out of my my show because of course me like how, how you said like that i wanted to change that like mm -hmm. that's how i want to be i want to be able to be more expressive and right. stuff like that you know another thing like when we talk about you know families and and all this and that one thing that <clears throat> i one thing that I hope that I also put into that quote was just like how like was money also like you know like you could say like a struggle you could put anything into that quote like unexpressiveness ran into my family drug abuse ran into my family domestic violence oh, okay. you could put you could also put but in a put, sense it's a means for change right it means for change exactly like I put like poverty ran into my family until it ran into me like you know what I mean like my family was always this way we were always so struggling this way positive like until, hey it's moving a, it's forward a motive, yeah. I'm not just going to yeah. grab the baggage that my family had for me and take it into my next exactly. generation like, I'm gonna drop it mm -hmm, at I, the door see if I need anything from it. No, I probably don't. I don't even need to open the bag, basically. I just leave it at the, you know what I mean? Leave it for somebody else to grab, but I don't need to bring it anywhere. Another thing too, why I feel like that could carry over, not whether or not you speak on that to other people, not internalizing that, and not internalizing that to a certain degree, um, or not really processing, can cause certain people to lash out. So whether it is again, so the kind of so when you said sometimes your mom might have just been having a bad day, mm -hmm. trying to get that frustration out instead of taking like, a deep breath, maybe. Okay, let me but think. she didn't learn that. That's the thing. Is anything that you know what I mean? Well, she didn't learn. Not taking the time to internal. <laughs> Lisa said, that "Growing up in an expressive household made me more empathetic." Mm. That I can, yes, I can because see you know what people are feeling versus, like you said. They're just lashing the out, but at the same all the time, time, you still don't even yeah. know what's going on. Understanding, it, okay, was it her work? Did. Was it something I did? Yeah. Was it the dishes? Mm -hmm. Was it, you know what I mean? Taking like, you have no idea. Think, so, like, yeah, when you're in an expressive did. family and they're telling you, or even an expressive slash communicated family, right? Where they're like, look, this is how it is. And that's a big deal, too. It's like, uh, you can easily say communication um, issues with your family. Because for me, it was just like, you don't have any problems because my problems are worse than your problems. So, you don't have any problems. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but then growing up, that's the only way you solve problems is communicating and letting people know like how you feel. And um, yeah, just learning not to take what people say personally, but understanding that- That's that's a big one. You know what I mean? If you have some sort of conviction or you have some sort of feeling, then yeah, make sure, you. yeah, exactly. Make sure to turn to yourself and realize, hey, maybe this is something that I need to work on, Take not that other person. Charge and kind of that's another thing that made me want to grow because at a young at a younger age i was more hostile like i'd be quick to i was a hothead yeah and through growing like i, I really mellowed out over time 
but I didn't like being that type of person. Obviously. Like some 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 minor like some that somebody would say or whatever. Should be like, what? Like you just say like just start tripping or but a lot of time it would be I'll be tripping more. I'll be tripping more. <laughs> Um, I look like a catfish? No, you said No, what? It says she's unreasonably fine. So yeah, she does kind of look like a catfish. This he's is why. He's saying something has to be wrong. But I don't know. <laughs> I'm talking about you. He's talking about... Lisa? Oh. <laughs> but but wow. for me... Uh, he said it's called genetic shoddy. Jesus blessed you. Now he's complimenting her. <laughs> you went from catfish to... <laughs> Shoot your shot or what? Yes. Look what he <laughs> said before. Look what he said. Uh, he said uh, those look. pickup lines ran into your family. No, look, he said. Family until they look, the Vamps, you and you Vamps is on a mission. Look, he said, Lisa, you got a snap for recent <laughs> purposes. I promise. She said, I don't use it. He said, and that's okay, hey, baby. I'll give you a reason hey, to use it. Hey, don't put my man's on blast. Oh, let, let that man work. Dope. Let that man dope. work. Let that man work. <laughs> And, and then Monta said, "Can we be invited to your date, though? Look, I'm just saying, because I want to. You know what I mean? Like we should podcast <laughs> from their date. Like they should have a date, and then we should be like in the background, like look, commentating." Monta oh, said, she, "Is he gonna go for the?" Hey, Monta their, their thing will 16 be. Year old. Their, <laughs> no, 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 no. Their thing, their thing will be take her out Tuesday. We got mental health. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can let's do it. Let's do it. We can just stream from like a from hey, an outdoor like everything just open up. So as long as they have Wi Fi, as long as they have Wi Fi, I can set this is, phone call. That's what I'm saying. So they'll be up there we and they'll be out Tuesday. like, oh, he said something. Take her out Tuesday, he said. No. We'll be the, we'll be the <coughs> on the date. Anyway. He's gonna be like, he's on the 20 yard line. He's like, oh, fumble. <laughs> he fumbled the ball. <laughs> Live commentary? Yeah. <laughs> Dang, bro. That's All right. Funny. Uh, next anyway, topic. Back, uh, where we? Uh, we covered that pretty no, well. Still, uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> to, to like, younger, uh, oh, like okay. So, you were a hothead when you were younger, and then because uh, we were talking why, about not taking things opposite. personally. So why and, yeah. I wanted to to change my mindset is because I didn't like my reaction to certain things. Mm -hmm. Being closed minded, I I can't stand. But like, one of the things I highly dislike is closed minded people, like. Mm -hmm. Right, like, how can I tell you something instantly? No, no, like, <laughs> you didn't even take the time to think about what I just said. But I just said your name. <laughs> yeah, so I was, I would never say I was the type to be super close minded, but like, um, just taking more time out of my day to understand maybe this person is feeling this way for this reason, or understand, okay, I'm lashing out for this reason, or um, really just internalize things more. And like you were saying, like, this person might be tripping on this day because I don't know their cat died or something, mm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. and I'm not knowing that. And <coughs> we bump into each other and they're tripping within reason because I'm not gonna just blatantly let myself keep getting disrespected. Yeah. But take the time <laughs> out to just understand, like, okay, like handle a certain situation, like whether somebody's dealing with death in their family, whatever it is, just. Understanding some people like to be approached in this way when they're feeling somewhere. Some people like to be approached like this. But taking the time out to understand people more. And understand myself and understand others. Because by understanding what makes you tick or why you're acting this way, you might recognize it more in other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. Giving people the benefit of the doubt, understanding why they, they, they're they acting a certain way towards you first before, you know, lashing out at them. And I think that's one thing. That's one thing like I I had to start doing yeah. before I before I lash out of you like I had to give people a reason first. I, I think before like I even you know go crazy before I even think like go okay, crazy. let me okay. just let me go in here, you know, walk through the door first instead of just charging through it, you know, head first. Like, first of all, bro, you need to stop. Exactly. Like, like yeah, let me <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's been a few times where I was like, "Wait, wait. Hold on. This is not it's not the way to do it. You've done it like this before. It didn't work out that way. So let me let me approach it a different way. You know, it, if anything happens, someone set you off. Someone, it's a, and it's all about like like what we talked about earlier a little bit. Like not letting yourself like get out of character. Not letting people not letting people bring you back to that point of of you know negativity. To steer it back, that all ties into it ran in my family till it ran into me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's how it all kind of ties in. Our main thing was kind of being violent or kind of just being kind of being quick to be outspoken. Um, and now 
having seen that, having witnessed that, we kind of interpret things a different way and process things a different mm-hmm. way as a result of that running in our family, mm-hmm. in our families. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed uh, that one. Um, I feel this one, this topic resonates with a lot of people simply because um, a lot of us have a thing that in our family that we're trying to to end in our generation, whether it be abuse, whether it be alcohol, whether it be drugs, all these all these things that we're trying to get rid of, um, which leads me to a, a song um, that Hobson recently dropped. It's called Your House. Please check it out if you're, you know, it's it's uh, it, it can be a tough listen for some people, uh, especially if you went through you know, abuse and, and violence in the family and stuff. Um, I do recommend checking it out. Um, it's all about, it does tie into this topic really well about ending generational curses and cycles. Um, I will play a little bit, a clip of it uh, at the end of this video, um, or at the end of this, but yeah, please, please check it out. It's, it's a really powerful video, um, about all that stuff and, and what we talked about in here. Um, but yeah, I'll see you folks uh, on the next uh, upload tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll the clip. Peace. The love I never felt growing up, I get it from you guys. Please don't get it twisted. I love both my parents to death. I just think there's issues a lot of fucking parents neglect. We all got these traumas we carry, and sometimes it's scary because we bury the nest right there in our chest. And we subconsciously air and project the nightmares and the stress that we dealt with when we were younger. And that's why therapy's best. Listen. If you got kids of your own and you throwing tantrums, don't be oblivious and assume that it won't impact them. Children follow the protocol of the parents' blueprint, so when there's an issue, they might handle it just how you did. You did.